Welcome to Run Free and Live. I want to talk today about recovery run. The, the last two days, I did runs with strides in the middle of, of an easy run, and then yesterday, I did a tempo run. Didn't do a podcast on that because I didn't really know what to think about the, prog- the progress of it. Because yesterday, all I did was six miles of tempo run at around. Uh, 720, 730 pace. My watch said it was around more close to 715 pace because I'm on a Garmin, but it wasn't on when it comes to each mile. What happens sometimes on these uh, watches, you, you might hit the mile before the actual mile. So the watch will go up, say, a mile, but the actual mile in the actual distance on the track you're running or something that's already been cordoned off and marked shows up later. So I'm, I was running a, a three mile loop area and I hit the <laughs> the three mile before I hit the actual mark. So my watch went off for three miles before I hit the actual three mile mark on the course, basically. So I don't know anything to think about that. I'm waiting for the next per, actual tempo run to really think about how, how it's different than my normal tempo runs I've done in the past. But today I wanna to talk about recovery because I did a recovery run today, five miles, nothing too strenuous. I took my coach's advice and go out as if you are holding back and you know you're holding back. You're like, come on, let's do faster. Let's go. Let's go, people. Something like that. That's the feeling I want to feel. So I did that the past week or so when I first started working with this new coach to get my body some recovery before we started going to this training block. I didn't want to take time off completely because I just I just go antsy and I go crazy. And I have taken time off a couple of days in a row and I just don't like it because it's just I'm hyperactive. <laughs> anyway, I've been going the slow paces. I did something today. Going out today, the first mile or two was kind of normal, kind of the normal way it's always been after a hard day before. Either do sprinting, intervals, mile repeats, tempo, race, whatever it is. The next day, it's always, you feel kind of a little, like it's hard to get going. Like your muscles feel almost like an um, like, like a wheel in an engine where it's like slowly starting to move. It's like creaky and everything. It's not popping or anything. Like nothing was made sounds in my body. Just it's like, okay, let's get going. And as the run goes on, your muscles slowly loosen up and everything gets easier and easier to run. And you're not fighting your body. It's kind of how I describe it. <laughs> that's the only way I think of describing it. So that's how the first mile or two went. It wasn't as bad as it normally is in the past. Normally, uh, when I would do a hard day before the next day, I would feel it extremely a lot more i would have more heavy leg, like like it feels like it's so heavy to lift my leg up compared to the natural just ebb and flow of lifting my leg up so today was i lift my leg up i'm like wow it's not so hard i did feel some of the, the muscles by the glutes by the buttocks oh the butt actually and then with that butt connects the legs more on the right side because that's the issues i've been having is more on the right side than the left side but overall i did feel that slowness to start and move and i'm okay i'm okay with that because that's that's how running works. So, so my, for the mile and two, that was doing that way. And then I hit mile three, and I turned around because I went two and a half miles down and two and a half miles back. Um, going down, I noticed I hit some wind during like the second mile, which is why my second mile is a lot slower, because the wind does do that to you. Coming back, the wind was to my back, so I didn't have the problem as much. But I did notice once I hit mile three and four, the legs finally loosened. I, I noticed for me and my body, it takes about two miles for your muscles to loosen up. Same thing with the warm up. Um, half mile or mile doesn't always cut it that much. It's it's better than nothing, but two miles or more is always good for me to move when I'm doing the recovery or even warming up. So that's what happened today. On mile three and four, everything was looser. I was moving on the tra- on the trail very nicely, uphill downhill where there was hills, and everything was going fine. The last mile, I was very impressed because, according to my watch, I hit under nine minute mile pace. Most of the run, like the first mile, the first mile was at like close to 920, roughly, and then the second mile was close to 940 because of, like I said, the wind hit back, and I just want to go by feel. So even though the wind was pushing me, I want to keep the feeling, which means you're gonna run slower because that's what's gonna happen with the wind, which I was okay with because I was going by feel only, not about the watch pace, which I thought was very impressive for me. And I'm very proud that I actually kept to my guns and kept to the script and the plan. The plan today was go easy and recover. 
Not a time, not a race, just go recover and follow the plan. Did that and it worked beautifully. On that last mile, like I said, I was coming back, getting ready to go back to where I started. And I wasn't going faster, wasn't going harder, wasn't even checking the watch to make sure my pace was anywhere. I was just running normally and letting the legs go. I was focusing the last two, three miles on my form to make sure my form was good. Remember, my, make sure my posture, my legs were good, make sure my hips were broke down, make sure I, my steps were in line, make sure I was um, streamlining my feet one in front of the other, make sure everything was all in line, my breathing was good, making sure all that, I was working on that. So that way, something to get my mind off of, of the pace, not thinking about it. And just listening to some music, because I had my uh, my watch on, I had some music on, so I did that. And then when I hit the last, I was like, wow, I feel really good. And I did. At the end of it, when I was taking a few minutes to absorb what I actually went through, and what I'm, cause I'm trying to learn from each run, I understand that your legs will open up naturally. And that even though maybe during the first parts of the run, or maybe in a couple runs in a row, no matter what it is, you might be going, God, my, my, my runs are not doing good. My body won't work the way I want it to. I wish it would. Just let it go. Get the ego out of there. Get the emotions out of there. Allow the body to do what it needs to do. What that means is you're being smart, using your brain to go slow and easy. Your body will naturally do what it needs to do. It might take longer. It might take shorter. Uh, whoever knows how long it takes. But allow it to do what it needs to do. And that's what I did. And the run was fantastic. And I very enjoyed the fact that I... No, don't get me wrong. I wish my recovery runs were eight mile pace. It would be awesome. I think that's more of a psycholo- psychological thing than it is on time. Because I know the less time on your feet, it feels good to know that you did a run in so much time. And then the more time you're out there, you have to think about, oh, that's more time on my day. But I was very glad that I followed the plan. The run progressed up to the end where it was actually the same effort, same feeling, but it was a lot faster without even trying. That was great. And I feel loose. That was the whole thing. I felt very loose at the end. I love that. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about is what I've been doing in the evenings. Yes, I do a very good stretch when I get up in the morning. It's about 45 minutes stretching from top to bottom, head to toe. I go through each of the muscle groups twice, and I do that great. I've been doing that for years. It's always good to start the run like that, and I feel great. I do the same thing when I come back. Um, I do a stretch down. Um, what I've been doing in the evenings lately, um, in the past like month or so, is I got these Norma Tech um, leg- leggings. Leggings and hips, basically. It's these sleeves that go over your legs and also on your hips where you're attached to hoses where it has a motor. And it pumps air, and it, it, like, it almost like compresses the muscles where it's attached to. And that is mostly just to help recovery. It's almost like massaging, but just pushing. Think about massaging with the, with the muscle. That's pushing. Not it's be- This is not saying it's better or worse. I'm just This is a, a tool in my arsenal to help out. And I did 30 minutes of legs last night. No, 40 minutes of legs last night and 25 of hips. I'm still trying to figure out the combination of what's best. Maybe hips is more, maybe it's not, whatever. But I feel it's helping a lot when it comes to recovery. When it comes to recovery. You can hear I'm getting out of them right now. It's helping a lot when it comes to recovery, a lot. I swear that with these Normatec, like my legs are looser. It's like usually I have this tightness throughout the day. I don't have that as much anymore. And, I, and I'm doing it right now, it's the morning. And I find if I do it before I go to work, I work, I walk a lot better. I don't have the stiff stiffness coming in and out of the car because I'm an adjuster, so I, I'm in the car all day. That helps a lot, and that's great. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out more recovery ways. Um, I, I've done a couple of cryos, but I haven't done that much when it comes to heat. When it comes to like the sauna, or the jacuzzi, I've done that years ago, but or in the past year. Um, I'm gonna try to incorporate more of it into it. But th- this recovery is doing great. So great recovery run. Following the plan is key. And then there's doing recovery in the evening, getting yourself ready for bed. I've noticed if you stretch before bed, you sleep a lot better soundly. And also it's like kind of calm your mind. So how it helps you sleep. That's kind of what I do. So um, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it takes to stretch the muscles that you know need to be stretched before you go to sleep. Breathe in, drink water, and then go to sleep. I'm finding it helps a lot good. And there's Norma Tech is just another thing I've been doing before bed as well. Um, in the process, and it's been doing great for my recovery, and I'm looking forward to see how this helps with my speed times as we go forward. Quick note, I know it's like the third or fourth podcast. My goal right now is January 10, uh, my birthday, so I'm 37 years old today. Yay. 
Uh, I ran a time trial this past Sunday, uh, just about 27, I did two miles, 627 um, pace. So just about 12.55 was my, six, my two mile time. The goal is to run around 17 minutes for 5K, 4th of July, just about half a year away. Do you think it's possible? I'm trying to do all these techniques to get there. Thanks for listening. Take care.